This, 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 this is the most mature audiences only shit you've ever heard. Period. From Boston. From Boston. Broadcasting all over the world. This, this, the this, world. this is Send the most boy mature boys audience. Home. Cause we ain't gonna sugarcoat shit. Drop down, I'm give it to you. This, this is, this is the Joe Cronin Show. Now, now, here's Joe here's Cronin. Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin. <laughs> Alrighty, what's up everybody? How's everybody doing? Another lackluster Monday Night Raw. The only thing that the only thing that sucks is last week at least we had the funny moment where Seth's head bounced off that table. That was really funny. I don't really think we got a funny moment tonight other than the minority gauntlet rumble. One by a white man. That was hilarious. Jake DeMarco is here. You guys are here. This is the Monday Night Raw Review. Hit that like button. I know you want to hit that like button and love it up really good. Just, just hit the button and suck on it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, everything I've built over the last eight years is dying. We're watching everything die before our very eyes. The numbers are down everywhere. The numbers are down on WWE. This is why I always said, man, I want WWE to do well. Because when it does bad, I do bad. It's contrary to what people used to think. And, and you know, this is certainly the worst it could possibly get. You know, this obviously is a, si a different situation. But still, it's bad. It's very bad. And, um, you know, we're, we're at the point here where uh, we, we got problems, brother. We got problems. We're talking about... 353 people watching us right now when normally by now there'd already be 800 people here. So that tells me that hundreds of people have fallen asleep tonight or just said, you know what, I don't, what am I even going to hear about this? You know what I mean? So what, what is even going to happen? And I'm at the point, too, where, I, where I'm tired. Like, I'm sleepy as shit, dude. I yawned the minute Raw came on. How weird is that? I slept well today. Like, I slept well. I woke up at 10 a.m. or something like that. Had a great sleep. Yeah, I did some work outside in the sun again, but the minute Raw came on, I yawned. And I went, oh, my God, this is really a trouble. Um, anyway, um, those are my initial thoughts before we start getting to everything, just as I ramble on this intro to l allow the people to realize we're live. Uh, Jake, what are your initial thoughts of... Monday Night Raw tonight. Hello, my name's Jake. Uh, nice, to, nice to be calling into the show tonight. I uh, I didn't watch Raw, but I want to know what you thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's about how I feel. Um, sadly, they're just. What is there you to feel go like over? a retarded caller? Is yeah, essentially. Okay. I, I feel like a, you know nonsensical and just like what are you going to say? A bunch of drabble. That kind of I I feel like a hypocrite, but. Certain things I liked for one reason that I usually don't care for, but most of it wasn't executed well. I swear I wish they just took themselves into a, a break off season until fans could be back in the arena. Well, why Even don't if they, they... Could do twenty five percent of the fans like like they're saying something? But why don't they do what I was saying weeks ago, which was like do at least an hour of the show that's a flashback, like WrestleMania twelve, 
you know, the the street fight with Roddy Piper and Goldust, and then do the I match. I heard that Fox didn't outright want repeats. Oh, my God. Well, even if Fox didn't, what about USA Network? What about... Dude, There's what a parody a, clause, too. If they do it on one, they have to do it on the other. And... Oh, really? Well, because, dude, listen to this. What What is the one thing that we don't get enough of? And it's Vince McMahon, right? What if Vince McMahon, like, did a a intro and a sort of an outro, and they, they showed the whole Roddy Piper gold dust thing, and then Vince McMahon, like, basically talked about it, like, behind the scenes. Yeah, almost like what you get for when you see shoot interviews and they cut yeah. the footage, that kind of idea. Vince shoot like Vince McMahon shoots. People would love that. They would just, oh my god, dude, that would be riveting. That would get ratings. That would get amazing ratings if Vince McMahon was like, well, we wanted uh, Goldust to do this, and so then he lined up here and he does this thing, and you know he almost gets hit by the car here, and I'm yelling at him on the, you know, and maybe you get Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon. Put Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon in chairs next to each other. Yeah, and just let them go. And let even what about fucking? Can you bring in Conrad and have him like interview them about it? And then he's gonna bang too. I mean, whatever. And then just have like the cuts of the, and then go go to the whole match, you know. And then have the whole match, and then have closing statements. Dude, I would jerk off to that. It would be so good. I mean, maybe they don't think it, there's a. But even if they didn't do all that, just showing old stuff, just show old stuff. Like it's. I don't know. I don't understand why that that's not being... There's a lot that confuses me. I mean, AEW does have some wrestlers around the ring to try and make it look like an audience, at least, you know, in the recent tapings. Yeah. I mean, this was taped the other day, so I don't understand why they, they can't go through. And uh, It was taped April 27th. I mean, it's a week ago. You know? It, it's just there's so much they can do to tweak these things and fix things. I don't know. It, it just feels like zero effort. I um, I think I already patroned this out, but I patroned it out again. My bad for all the patrons that got two alerts. Um, <laughs> let me just go ahead and tweet it out. But yeah, the um, the only, the only people that act like there's they know there's not an audience there that's invisible is is to me the street profits. I know you've said it before, but tonight they exemplified that again. They they go to the camera. They're shaking the camera. They're in the camera's face. You know, they're talking to you at home, not you as if you're supposed to vicariously be there you know that it just yeah that i like the fact that they're focused you know on their audience so it works much better it feels more realistic because we know there's no audience there right i'm just showing up i like that dr Fauci <laughs> laughing. Dr. Fauci, yeah this is him that, watching raw right here He's watching oh, raw. oh it's like oh. that's what they did oh boy I wouldn't have had Charlotte face Liv Morgan. Oh, my you know? God. Did that turn out bad? Like, what was that? The, the match itself got better as time went on. And I know what they're trying to go with. Oh, Liv looks good in defeat. But the way she lost so long ago when she went into exile, you know, and disappeared for all that time to become Liv Alina, she, you know, it was because she lost to, to Charlotte, basically. That was her breaking point. So she needs the win over Charlotte here. No. And I know Charlotte uh, can't lose. There's she's no the way. NXT I, I after seeing what I saw tonight, there ain't a chance in hell I ever want to see Liv Morgan win a damn thing. She sucks. That's the problem. I mean, I wouldn't have put her here yet. So she really sucks on the microphone, dude. Oh, blah blah blah. Blessed something. Blah blah blah. And then Charlotte, you're just like all the other ones. I like. There's nothing yeah, the, the robot peacock and there's nothing she felt for like Charlotte a, a to play cheerleader. off. Well, there's nothing for her to play off of because Liv didn't say. Well, I'm saying Liv felt like a you know a Valley Girl cheerleader. Mm -hmm. That kind of you know whatever type of role. Yeah, yeah. So. Like I'm I'm gonna challenge. Liv came off like the like the girl that's made fun of who just moved into the town, and she's going up against the head cheerleader. Um, and it's the first time though, like at the beginning of the movie. Where the girl tries to say something tough, but like then the uh, it just doesn't work. But then by the end of the movie, she does nail it or something. So, had that been what happened, then I guess that would make sense. But that's not what I got out of any of this. It was just sort of a hey, you guys have a little talking to, so we can have a match, okay? And and Liv loses, okay, so she can't beat Charlotte, okay, so Liv can't even be NXT champion, so that's not gonna happen. 
Exactly. And, and her whole story, the crux of it was her, you know, going and disappearing to find out who she is because of the way Charlotte beat her. Right. And made her feel like a nobody during the, you know, that big, you know, open house town hall type meeting they had on SmackDown. So it, it's just the whole thing is, is that was the whole point of her story to come back and get one up on Charlotte. Charlotte can't lose. She's the champ. It's just I don't pair them together now. The women in the beginning were asinine and didn't work. There was a couple of times that you saw Shayna trying to hold back laughter, especially right. when Oscar was going nuts and dancing. Shayna's supposed to like mean mugger, and instead she's smirking like she's on <laughs> SNL. Uh. So that was pretty funny, at least. I I didn't laugh at Shayna, you know. <laughs> yeah, know, Shayna in, in, in Shayna having to interact with Oscar was kind of funny. But but Nia was just annoying. Like I find her in, in ragingly annoying, which they clearly do too. That's why they kicked her out of the ring for the whole thing. Yeah, she's just man. She don't seem right at all. Like I don't know. Nia Jax. I, I is feel weird. like she's got heat on her internally at this point too. Like oh shit, we started a storyline. She hurt more people. I wouldn't be you know now people are treating her you know more poorly. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear something like that in a couple of weeks. Yeah, God, People getting I, I fed up with her being so heavy fisted. I can't stand her. Um, I don't know, man. I just she's unsafe. I mean, never mind the character itself. You know, work rate. Yeah. She's unsafe. I don't like anything about almost anything about her. I don't think I liked her in NXT. I remember watching her uh, in that show from NXT, whatever that was, Proving Ground or something else. I forget what it was called. Um, but it, something whatever, like that. it was something like that. And it, that was pretty good. She was pretty good in that. And I was excited for her. I said, wow, I kind of like her. And I don't know what it is, man, but the longer after that it went, the worse she got. And God, did it suck. What's up, chat? How you guys doing? Make some noise in the chat. Is anybody fucking alive today? What the fuck is going on today, man? Chat's There's, lit. It's Denise's birthday. Is anybody so really birthday, lit, Denise. though? Denise, what's up? Happy birthday. 40 is the new 14, like I said earlier. <laughs> um, I mean, come on, man. 600 people are here. Where's the other fucking 700 people? We're missing like 700 people since COVID started. There hasn't been one donation yet tonight. We're missing 700 people. Not one fucking phone call. I'm telling you, man, I, this these fucking WWE is killing the fans. You people are fucking dead. Where the fuck is everybody? 113 likes? 600 people here? Where's the other fucking 600? We're missing some serious motherfuckers here because this company is putting people to sleep. And uh, starting this week, I am bringing back the retro uh, reviews. So whether I'm solo or with somebody else or a guest, this week uh, the retros are coming back because people need something, man, wrestling-wise, that isn't this shit. But I'm telling you, man, I've never seen anything like this since the year 2014 or 15. This is crazy. 611 now that's a lot of people and god damn is it amazing but wow dude where is everyone people are fucking asleep right now they are dead or like they're they're killing their wives right now because this show is so bad vince is killing his business and he's killing my business vince mcmahon and the wwe are killing my business and vince's business and i don't like it and it's vince's fault and he's a piece of shit for it. I told you, man. You're going to ruin all of us. You're going to ruin all of us. L Lair Bear, what's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for subbing to the channel. How, how are you, brother? God damn. Whoa. And then you... Oh, like, somebody There's woke up. Holy shit. There's something weird gotta happen. Wow. And strange gotta happen. And things are kind of happening. What the fuck is happening? Aliens. Extraterrestrials. They gave me a shot. Nanotechnology. I'm not me. You gotta wake me up. I'm I'm asleep. Oh, God damn it. Just go put me to sleep. Oh, oh, I'm fucking crazy. Split personality. Scott McKinnon. <laughs> you got a dick. I'll follow you. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Things I take away from Raw. The risk is worth it. The minority gauntlet won by the white man. <laughs> the risk is worth it. More black people lost in a tag match versus a thorn in the pink and two in the stink or whatever their names are. Nia fuck. sucks. The fuck! Fuck! Fuck you! Cocksucker! 
Mr. J.D. Venom. Holy shit, J.D. Venom. Thank you, man. Holy fuck, man. I didn't expect a 51 bomb after it was so quiet. I mean, it is quiet. Like, I mean, I'm talking people are in a goddamn coma. Um, J.D. Venom, thank you, dude. Uh, yeah, dude, the funniest thing of the night was the minority rumble. Because here's what happened. I think WWE it, Monday Night Racist. Yeah. <laughs> but by the right, by the time um I think it was when on uh Garza, when Garza came out. When, yeah, that's when, when Adam Ant and you were going back that, and forth on Twitter. <laughs> no, when Garza came out is when I tweeted out, like, holy shit, this is the minority gauntlet. It's the minority gauntlet. So we're already talking about how this is the minority gauntlet, and other people are saying it too. And I'm laughing about the fact that I'm like, man, this is like all minorities. It's great. Look at this. It's the minority gauntlet. And then fucking AJ Styles comes out as a surprise. And first I was mad that Bobby Lashley DQ'd himself. Yeah, because I said to you, why wouldn't you hold in your rage to to get a chance at that briefcase? Yeah, so Bobby Lashley's an idiot. Stop attacking somebody that you've already got the better of? You're on a roll. Yeah, and then you willingly take yourself out. Like, you don't keep attacking to show, like, oh, you couldn't stop and the anger got the best of you. Like, you're just like, oh, all right, I lost, and walk out. Bobby Lashley. If you DQ it, yourself, go fucking crazy. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a red herring to make you think, oh, they're building up Lashley. Yeah, and, which made sense. Right, and then, so, like, in a way, I give them credit because it kind of worked out. No, it did work out. But, but, yeah, I was like, all that shit for Bobby Lashley, and now he just DQs himself? That, this is retarded. I actually got up and walked away at that point, and then I just went to go do something. Had I stayed and watched, I would have seen what they were doing, which was the red herring to get to AJ Styles. But then to see the only white guy in the whole thing come out... Instantly. And then win, it was just really funny to me. Because we're calling it the minority gauntlet the whole time, like from the beginning almost. And then in the end, a white guy shows up finally, and then he wins. And it was like it was just extra funny to anybody who was involved in those tweets about the minority gauntlet. <laughs> it was great. I was like, ah, ha, ha, they fucking. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I mentally checked out when uh, we saw Titus O'Neil on TV. If you're in a tournament oh. or a gauntlet match, anything like that, a rumble maybe, and you see Titus O'Neil is a, is across from you in the ring. That's yeah. like a pass. That's an that's an instant win. You know you're you're going over when you're facing Titus. And it when's the last be. time he won? I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, it, that's what, at least what it feels like at this point. So everybody. So once I saw him, and that guy should Titus, never that guy should never be taking dives in like three minutes because he's massive. Exactly, but fifty seconds and WWE uses him constantly for all the PR stuff, though. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, they love. They him. send him everywhere. He does all the kids' school stuff. He's great yeah. for the company. Um, That's why I'm so surprised that he's treated so poorly on TV. But when your first two opponents are Titus O'Neil and Akira Tozawa in less than a minute altogether match time, yeah, I, I, that's when I mentally checked out. You would think so. that once in a while they'd put Titus on TV um, and in a po- like, and he would like get a win over some jobber for like in like two minutes. And then get a chance at somebody and then lose, but at least, like, he sort of seems legit a little bit. Like, instead, it's just he's a full-on jobber, but he's huge. And he's the guy that goes around to the schools and is like, stay positive, kids, because I stay positive. Eventually, someone's going to raise their hand and be like, hey, aren't you the guy that sucks dick every week? <laughs> you know? Aren't you always taking dives? Yeah, aren't you always taking dives? It's like Getting uh, pinned and rolled up and beat up. My dad says you suck. Well, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's just my, weird. My dad said the only thing you ever did well was fall into the uh, underskirt of the ring. Yeah, basically. Basically what happened. That's terrible. That That's what your career boils down to is a flub. You tripping on your way to the rumble in Saudi. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's actually, in a way, it kind of like is might have saved him. Yeah, you they know? couldn't let him go then. Yeah, because Vince loved it. And I mean, but when did he get suspended though for touching Vince? Was that before that? Before that. Before yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm like sure. so like they already liked him anyway. And then he grabbed Vince that time to like almost like to play around with Vince to be like, Hey, what are you looking you know, letting your daughter go first? You know, like almost like he got too comfortable with Vince. You know what I'm saying? Like he was like he got so comfortable with Vince he he wanted to pal around with Vince, but it was on live T V and it was weird. 
So Vince got all pissed off at him, like, what the fuck? Like, we're on TV, you fucking asshole, you idiot. And so he got suspended. But then then he runs down and falls through the thing. And I, I think Vince just loved that. And he missed the Mania payday, too, didn't he? Wasn't that like yeah, one yeah, of the they, issues, they I believe? Him. They fucked him out of that, and he took it, man. And I think Vince respects that about him, but also I think Vince likes him a lot. So although he was irritated to shit with him that time, yeah. Vince loves the guy because if he if he didn't, there's no way this guy would still be there. I think Stephanie likes him too. And maybe she really likes him. No, maybe. no, I think Stephanie really, yeah, likes, really him. likes him. I think they like him. I think they think he's a great guy and uh and I think that he helps, like you said, with all those campaigns and Yeah, yeah. public relations asset big time there. If he's white, he's gone. He's very well spoken. He's fired and if he's white. Do you think if he's white he's fired? I think he's done if he's white. Maybe not. Really? Yeah. I think if he's a white guy, he's gone. If he had the same relatability to children, probably not. Yeah, but I mean, I think that they're really into yeah, the, I, I see what you're getting at. I yeah, mean, they're it's, into it's the possible, inner city though. stuff and the urban yeah. stuff. Like they're they mention that shit all the time. Yeah, because so like they want I, relatability. Of yeah, course. like they're like, oh, you 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 know, you can be a, a voice for this. You know? I, could, I could also see somebody that that in that same role that is that ultimate gopher suck up. <laughs> yeah, you're <laughs> Sadly. right. White too. If they had, you know, gotten to that point where they just do everything, I could see them probably still staying. Yeah, I think that. But they I certainly really... see that that's what they're striving for. I think they you do know, the like. Urban point. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I think he does have great leadership skills and shit like that. So, like, I think that people really can rally with him. So I get that. Um, I'm glad he's in the company in that role. But, but again, um, it's just a little goofy. Like like you said, when he comes out, he just loses every time. I mean. And he's such a big guy. It just doesn't. He, it's like I don't believe that he would even lose that quickly. So like it's just, yeah that quickly too. Never mind that he lost, but how he loses. That's the so problem. decisively. And I feel like he's Braun Strowman at this point. Like I don't believe anything. I don't. There's no need for him to even be there. Like because I don't. I'm just. I don't buy a damn. I don't buy him losing in a minute. Like I just don't buy him like losing in a minute or two minutes or what to Bobby Lashley. But yeah, Minority Battle Royal uh, ended up a white guy won it. So it's very. Yeah, and it's AJ who was supposed to originally uh, change up his character. He was supposed to come back as a face, is what we were talking about and hearing. They didn't go with that, clearly, thankfully. But he still has the OC gear on. So yeah. maybe they, they held off with the face turn. I was wondering if this was like taped a long time ago. Or well, it was I taped the 27th, that. but it was after everybody was fired. So Yeah, so they knew. That they you know, were fired. That, that was maybe just the only gear he has with him, or I think he dances a, a quite a bit. Uh, Gordon, I think he does the because he does the whole <laughs> like I think Vince loves that stupid shit. So I think Vince oh yeah, is absolutely. Like, yeah, Vince is like and he kind of dances in a way. So I mean, but you're right; it is true when they don't dance enough. Like Titus is kind of like a big guy; like he sort of does do a little bit of a little jive in there. Um, I've seen him do it in the ring, but yeah, he's yeah. a court jester, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a. I think he's sort of a yes sir, a yes sir. Even yes. the prime time players was a comedy role essentially. Yeah. Let me get your bag, sir. You know, I think Vince sees him as like uh, a great like valet type of black guy, you know, because Vince loves those type of old throwback black guys, you know. So Vince probably sees him as a like if he dressed him up in like a limousine driver suit i think vince would really like uh t titus right so i think that that's a big thing for vince um, yeah oh and so. you know what? i correct what i said before thank you brian from Southside. he said in the chat uh aj said he's gonna wear the oc gear for what like 30 days something like that like a protest or something yeah yeah he said the oc gear is all he has he's working on getting new stuff made but i thought he also said that he was wearing the gear for a month to rep those you know his brothers that he lost or something i forgot about that you know what you should do is, uh, well, so much for AJ Styles' pull, huh, in the company or whatever, you know? Yeah, he said, well, he, that's the first thing he tweeted about it was, I couldn't save them, something like that. I mean. It's true. He got him another contract and they were still let go. Yeah, this guy made a what big more can deal you do? out of it. Yeah, he made, a, he made a fucking deal out of it. I mean, they really sucked in the company. They did nothing. Not to, um, to, the to WWE's their fault. Small, you know, to their yeah. credit, no, we've seen their work rate previously in New Japan. With the Bullet Club, you know, it was it was excellent. I don't know why, but uh, who's the taller one? Not Carl Anderson. Uh, 
Luke Gallows? Yeah, Gallows. Gallows just... I hate to say it, but he don't look very menacing. He looks like a... Kind of like a... Kind of looks like a... Um, kind of looks like a tard. Uh, some of the face paint really accentuates some of those <laughs> negative features. So yeah, He just don't look right. He looks like a big, like a stupid person. You know? Yeah, he's got that Festus kind of look still stuck. Yeah, he looks like Festus. He doesn't look like... Uh, I wonder if that's why you associate the slow look, because like, you, part of your mind reminds you that, hey, that was that no, was Festus, that's him. You know what it is? is that's uh, the baby punter. You know what it is? is uh, In Bullet Club, he wasn't like that. I feel like in Bullet Club, he felt like a guy. Like, yeah, like because a dude. he had... <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, like he he felt like a real dude in Bullet Club. Like I was like, wow, that that guy is way different than he was when he was Festus. Like that that's a real kind of guy, you know. But uh, when he came back to WWE, I mean, this guy looks like fucking tarred Kevin Nash. Yeah, you know I mean, like if, if Kevin Nash like had a dumb brother. <laughs> who ate his own shit. That's why he was Festus, you know? Yeah, Luke... Had that big, Luke, dumb look originally. Luke Gallows would be, uh, like, Kevin Nash's tardo brother. You know? I mean, so... I mean, what are you gonna do? Now, WWE booked him like idiots. So, that didn't help. But, uh... Yeah, they, they came in attacking through the crowd. Right. The week after, they were very dominant in tag team action. I mean, that was in Hartford. I was there for that. And then, following that, Nothing. You like that photo right there? <laughs> I mean, he it's almost like he regressed back to this guy. A little bit. Yeah, like, I don't know. They just always kind of came off kind of goofy in the WWE. And that's really the WWE's fault a little bit. And uh, I don't know, man. I just don't, uh, I don't buy the evil here. You know, I don't buy the look. I don't buy the evil. He was always more of like a dumb, like bad guy. Like they also hey AJ, put them I, in that comedy chicken yeah, shit moron he, spot too, so it made yeah, it even worse. That's what it is. It's the, it's you not just them. you constantly saw them act like Scooby Doo villains. Like hey, you know, especially against Undertaker. That's that's the most obvious of all examples. Hey but, AJ, you see that when we uh look? I bet he eats his boogers. Ha <laughs> ha. If we go hide around the corner, when he when he, when he comes around, we're going to jump out. We're going to get him. Oh, no, we jumped AJ. You know, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah. It was very, <laughs> very. I don't know what I'm saying, but. Very, you know. No, you, it's very Seth Rollins bad guy. It's just, yeah. It's the same thing. Again. Twirling like his mustache. Saturday morning cartoon evil villain. That's what these guys were. They weren't the road warriors. They weren't nothing. They weren't anything. I, but I, although I think that Carl Anderson was more believable. When Carl Anderson was out there, he seemed to me like a guy who wanted to compete but even he looks like a weird dwarf asshole idiot like I mean not to shit on these guys but you know what I'm bored as fuck right now so <laughs> I hope somebody in the wrestling world's watching this and se probably sending it to them and being like this fucking troll idiot is talking shit about you guys right now um, but you know what nobody was going to come on my show anyway so I don't give a fuck somebody's going to say right. hey Joe you could have had them on your show yeah sure Sure. But uh Carl Anderson, <laughs> even Carl Anderson, man, he looks like a like a fucking goblin on an NHL team who's like the rat. He looks like like the, the, the like, wannabe Mike Canellis. Yeah, he's like the be he's like yeah, yeah, I mean Mike Canellis is a good-looking guy, but you know, Carl Anderson has a hot Asian wife, but he's got a flat rat nose and face. Um, you know, Carl Anderson is like the fucking instigator on a hockey team. You know, you fucking just want to slap the shit out of his face. You know, but, you know, he can't figure it out, but he looks like a rat. I mean, one, you know, so one guy looks like he's got Down syndrome. The other guy looks like a rat. And I then, can definitely see the pointed ear that makes the that rat look yeah, stand and, out. And then they never really give them a chance. And, so, and, I, and I fucked it up, too. Steven uh, was right. Snitsky was the one that punted babies, not Festus. I yeah, always yeah, screw that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, Snitsky. They're Snit all morons in my Snitsky mind. Snitsky was more, like, evil looking. Festus yeah, he was, was like, that, like oh, you know, the oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, punted his mother. Mother punted him. He was the baby punted. Yeah, uh, that's probably what you were thinking. That's what I was um, thinking of. But yeah, so you got those two up. you got these two guys who should have been something in the company more than they were. Vince didn't understand the Bullet Club shit, but he gave it to them anyway. Uh, the best club around, or whatever the fuck, who cares? When they um, gave that to them, I feel really late as well. You know, because it took what 
how recent did that change where the three of them came out and it came, you know, they had their own yeah. team as the OC. So yeah, they it wasn't really acknowledged much up until then. They should have came in right, right as like the good brother. They should have came in as the good brothers club or the, the good brothers or something like that. And they should have just came in that way or the club, the only club that matters or, yeah, you know, or, was... or they could have said the clubs here, the club, you know, you know, whatever the fuck. But instead, it was just dumb. Again, Vince doesn't get it, but he tries anyway. But it doesn't matter if you don't do it the right way. They well, he just... wanted to avoid it being anything like the club at first. Remember, and we were yeah. like, "Why are they doing this?" And then they had Balor Club come about, and oh. it, it was just very, very awkward. None of it worked. And these two guys, honestly, are the same guys as the Revival, except the Revival is better. It's bad when you're you're watching something be rehashed, whether it be an idea, a match, you know, a gimmick, anything, and you can tell it feels, you know, retreaded. It, it feels more like parody than something fresh, and it, it's just so unfortunate because it's even harder when you you know you know something you know is already going to happen or the way something's going to play out. Your your brain just won't let you think any other way. So. Yeah, we're burying the shit out of these guys right now, but uh, it's not their fault entirely. So, pretty Basically, much. Basically, just you always know they're going to suck. Yeah, that's we're, the problem. We're reviewing the the WWE version of them. I believe they're much. I believe they are better than this, but not, not much. much. I mean, not there's, much. There's yeah, even, matches and <laughs> yeah, they're better than this though, and WWE wouldn't allow it. So, hey, what are you going to do? Here's some donations. Let's just. Let's what the fuck that point is, Vince? What Omar. The fuck Vince isn't even trying. It's like the writings on the walls. Yeah. It's over for WWE with the product being worse week by week. I lost faith in this company. Omar, you know what? That's a great point. I almost wonder now if they are selling the company. Because what's the point? Why are they mailing it in every... I mean, why for the last year, but especially now. Like, this is the biggest mail-it-in shit I've ever seen. Like, this is this really what they're coming up with? Like this is really what the WWE is doing. Omar, thank you for the nine ninety nine. We got to get JD Venom on the board because he dropped fifty one dollars earlier. Uh, JD Venom, thank you, man. I feel bad because I feel like I called it out and then people started <laughs> donating. But uh, JD Venom, man, thank you, dude, saving the fucking night uh, with that first bomb. Um, I'm calling fifty one dollars a bomb because it was so quiet. Fifty one. It's a hell of a bomb. bomb. It's a hell of a bomb. It's a bomb. Um, yeah, I almost wonder if they are selling the company. It would make sense with why they're just... You tank the ratings? I mean... Tank the stock? That, don't, able to that buy out. doesn't make sense, really. It may, it would, you'd want the ratings to go up. Yeah, you figure you would, but I don't know. You never know with Vince. Well... It's, it, it could be, but you never know. It'd be silly, but he's so petty like that. That's weird. I mean, they, they, I just don't think he's paying attention. Or something. It, WWE that, edits seems, that seems equally as likely. Like I, I think it's it's more or less he's just not with the times anymore, and often his attention's forced back to wrestling. But it, it seems like his mind is elsewhere. I agree. I agree. It seems like he's a little bit. Uh, he seems like he's missing thirty percent of himself, and I don't know where that thirty percent. Yeah, is. I think it's in Stephanie's pussy. Um, <laughs> did you hear? Um, did you? Uh... Happen here. I'm not getting hired. I'm never going to get hired. <laughs> um, did you hear? It's like amazing to think that I was on the phone with Triple H at one point. You're right. Uh, not now. I'm sorry, Triple H. I'm kidding. I love your wife. I'm, What's that, I'm Michael sorry. Cole, you we, want we, more make, we make fun of my wife's pussy. Who cares? I mean, they both. We both live in New England. I mean, whatever. Um, you should. I mean, you know, he was like, I was going to hire him as soon as Vince was gone, but fuck that. Uh, WWE uh, edited out uh, Roman Reigns off of WrestleMania replay. You buy into this uh, at all that they really went out of their way to edit him out? Or I didn't notice that much. I just thought they were focusing on Rollins cash-in. So, yeah, but... Wise Society pointed it out to me on Twitter. You know, They're like, oh, look at that. You can't even see You know, he was sharing a tweet that says they didn't even show Roman and was in the WrestleMania 31 main event. Yeah, They also wouldn't show Seth pinning Roman. Wow, wow, wow. And it's like, uh, that certainly does bring a few... <laughs> basically you know but yeah conspiracy you, do, bells, do you but... think they really rain like because to me i just saw it and they might be right but I, I just saw it as they really wanted to focus on what seth did as an accomplishment so they didn't want any distraction so they made sure they just focus on seth and and they didn't have roman in there but there is a case to be made that they purposely like avoided roman 
Um, they could know. just have you know plausible deniability by saying, "Oh, yeah. it, it you know it was just because we were focusing on Seth, like you said." But really, Vince is that petty again. Cut him out, God damn it! You know that <laughs> that was his plan. Yeah, well, I can. I, I don't. Think I don't want to see him on my TV. I don't you know? think I can see Vince at this point being like, "Make sure you don't show that son of a bitch." Like I don't see that. But what I do Vince see... Vince trying to send him a message. Well, no. Well, maybe. But if he does send him a message, he wouldn't tell anybody. He would sort of... He would say... I feel like Vince would say, don't cut... Don't... Make sure you don't have as... You, you don't show Roman because we want to make sure it's all about Seth. So I could see that. Like, for that reason, like, we only need Seth. Focus on Seth only. There shouldn't be any of Roman. You know, we don't want people talking about where's Roman in the middle of trying to sell Seth. To everybody, so you don't want to bring in Roman while you're trying to sell Seth. So there's a real reason to do it, you know. Even if even if Roman was in the company, right? Even if Roman was in the company and in some other match coming up, you know, they I would have wanted to cut around that too to show like, no, look, Seth, 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 Seth. Yeah, but I, I could would you really well. do that, or like, would you not? Well, just show what happened, you know. Or did they just cut the way they cut, and it's people are looking way too into it? And uh, you know that's a question for the WWE staff and people and Vince right now. But we won't probably get that. But uh, be nice to hear. Might be nice to get it. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe Vince wants to go work for Trump. Maybe, maybe he wants the hell out of there. And yeah, maybe Trump go sit in his cabinet. You know what? Sell the WWE, make all kinds of money, selling the fuck out of it, and then Trump's. I've got a place for you in my cabinet, Vince. There you go. Imagine Vince McMahon working in the government for Trump and that in charge. <laughs> that would be crazy. With Linda of the small business. Because Linda's going to be working on his campaign. So Linda steps down as the small business, whatever the fuck. And Linda's going to be working on his campaign. Or is working now. Um, Vice, Vice President Vince McMahon as Trump gets rid of Pence. Right. And, uh, and, and you know Vince McMahon. You don't, you don't think that Vince McMahon wouldn't try to run for president? Oh, absolutely. I could Imagine see that. that. Imagine Vince running for fucking he president. He has that ego. They're selling masks now in the WWE shop, Awandi pointed out. Really? It says, be a superstar. Wear a WWE mask. They have Kane, The Fiend, uh, New Day, Sasha Banks. But, you know, it's it's all. But they do say that they will donate 100% of net proceeds to AmeriCares. So it's going towards a charity. Oh, so that's a good thing. That's nice. But it's just funny that they have WWE themed masks. That is funny. But it's also the number one selling thing on uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, the number one selling uh, item for over a week was Chris Jericho's uh, mask. Oh, that's on cool. Pro yeah, Wrestling people want tees. a mask and they want to yeah. you know, have something that they like represent. I'm trying to look up how much these are. I heard $12.99. The, uh, it's not bad. No, not at all. I heard the... Um, they're pretty cool looking too. Pro wrestling conference call uh, not that long ago, and um, I got the newsletter stuff because I still I still have my shirts on pro wrestling tees. Not really, I only have two or something like that, but I still get the invites to all the uh, info and all the other stuff. And they were you know talking about all the stuff that was selling and uh, yeah, Jericho shit is still still killing it over there. I mean, kind of crazy. I'm still waiting for the flim flam t shirt. I mean, I know that a lot of people won't care, but. I'm down with the flim flam. Like Jericho, like doing this or something like that. I buy that. I'm down with the oh, flim yeah. flam. Um, let me play another donation here. We got more coming in. It's Bimbo Baggins. Hello, Bimbo Baggins. Take out your privates. I'm a sexy Transylvania. Sexy Transylvania, Transvestite from Sexual Transylvania. PM Ejack, happy birthday to Denise. I'm not going to accept Corona Chan as an excuse for a bad show tonight. Yeah. It literally was burial the episode. Raid Shadow Legends was more fun than watching an episode of Ram. Yeah. Let that sink in. Oh yay, Charlie was really bad in the interview segments. Yeah, she's horrible anyway. Uh, Bimbo Baggins, thank you for the donation, my friend. Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, dude. AEW is doing a better job. Let's just be honest. Let's let's be dead honest right now. AEW is doing a better job than WWE. At the very 
I, I would give right now for what's going on with COVID-19 and having to watch with no fans and all this other bullshit, I'd probably rate the AEW product right now as an overall of, of, of somewhere between a 6.5 and a 7.5. Somewhere in there. Maybe a 6.5 or a 7. AEW, is to me, is drawing a 6 or a 7 every week. Around that. Um, right now... Yeah, I, I can agree with that. What do you think WWE is doing? I mean, a, a 2? 3 to 4. A 3? Yeah, I mean... SmackDown had a few better yikes. segments, but... I didn't even watch SmackDown. I haven't seen it. I mean, that's how bad things are, dude. I could be doing SmackDown and then doing monetize this. I I, I can't even Deville do and it. Mandy Rose got at it. I mean, that wasn't bad. The Fiend's usual stuff was pretty good. Daniel Bryan. I gotta watch you know. it. I mean, I I still gotta watch it. I really do. I have to watch it before the next you, one. But you, you don't have to. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't have to. But I mean, <laughs> but I, I need so. as what I do. I want to watch it and I want to review it still. I hope I can do it, but it's just so abysmal. Like it, it, this is yeah. WWE is bad. Like this is. I mean, when we used to watch every week, and it was bad when the crowd was there, we would come on here and complain. But I mean, this is. <laughs> oh my God! Did you believe it could get this worse? Like no. I mean, it's <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is like, it, it's it's like it's just as bad, but they have it's even worse. The matches are even worse. The ideas are are worse, and there's no crowd. That's how I explain it. About what's the difference between Raw right now and last year? The difference is the matches are worse, the ideas are worse, and there's no crowd. That's insane. But yet AEW is putting on shows that are somewhat on par with what they were doing when they had a crowd. Yeah, you know, and I guess that's because uh, you know they they have similar style booking with WWE, you know, is where one guy, I guess Tony Khan was responsible for most of that happening for the five shows that were taped. He came up with all of the matches and whatnot very quickly on the fly, so. Wow. Cody had a lot of hands-on for it, but Khan was the one that basically went ahead from what I read and had everything organized and laid out very quickly. So that's pretty cool. You know, I just think that I think that AEW's effort is so far outshining WWE. And even if you're somebody out there that doesn't like any of this right now, I yeah, get, they made I their get it. Consistent, so that's why at least week to week it seems like it follows more through. Is where WWE every now and again they throw these matches together, like Live in Charlotte, and you know, and, and it, it just feels odd, comes across poorly on TV, and ends up not working out and feeling like a waste of time. And somebody made a good point. Yeah, like, too bad AEW can't even get more than a million viewers. And it's like, yeah, that is, that is so weird. But, um, you know, WWE's on its way. We get the ratings here. Uh, where are the ratings at? We get the ratings are... Uh... SmackDown's under a two as well now. Yikes. I mean, SmackDown's going to be... Uh... I mean, we're going to get to AEW rating soon because AEW is drawn between a 600 and 800,000 people mostly every week. So you're about, you might see WWE, uh, w, instead of AEW catching WWE, like a lot of people wanted AEW to catch WWE, it's honestly more likely that, a, that, <laughs> that WWE is going to catch yeah, AEW. Yeah, they'll catch up. How about that? Who thought that would happen? Dear God. They did a, Not I. a 0. 0.50. In the 18-49 to 49 demo. What the fuck? I mean, that's number four for the night, though. Like, what? I mean, but they always take that number one spot. That's crazy. The episode drew an average of 1.9 million viewers. Dude, SmackDown... SmackDown was drawing a 3.5 even a few weeks ago, right? And we were like, what? Like, I think it was like four weeks ago that they were doing a 3.5, which was unheard of. Or something like that. We couldn't believe it. People have bailed on this like you wouldn't believe. I begged Vince McMahon to hire me. I, I, I mean, like, uh, I, I, you can laugh all you want. I, I begged you to hire me, Vince McMahon. I begged you to hire me. I begged you. I begged... 
Bruce Pritchard, who subscribes to this channel. I begged Connor. I begged Bruce Pritchard. I begged Vince McMahon. I begged Triple H. They almost hired me as a commentator, but then they hired that vampire idiot Vic Joseph. I have nothing to do, Vince. Give me a call. I will drive out there. You need help. This sucks. Unless you're trying to sell the company and ruin it on purpose, I don't know what you're, what you're doing. There is no way. It's, it's almost like we're sitting here and we're saying, oh, you know what, because of COVID, you know, that's, it's not their fault. You know, yes, it is. It is their fault because at WrestleMania, we were like, oh, no, this is going to be terrible. They put on a great show for what it was. They put on a decent show in front of nobody. So Most we, of Mania was, you can was do it. pretty damn good. Most of Mania was somewhat entertaining. And you know why I think it was entertaining, Jake? Because we had had like six weeks of shit. And so at WrestleMania, when they finally did something, we went, oh, wow, that was good. Because yeah, it was. New. It wasn't all a replay. But what they don't understand is they need to put on WrestleMania every week. Yep, That's they can do some cinematic things, they can do some pre-taped segments, they can do it still live in certain ways if they want, but they can do so much more. Like, why wasn't MVP down, you know, with that new team tonight? I always forget their names, Thorne, oh, uh, Vic, or whatever. Vink? Yeah, Vink. Uh, yeah. Call him Dink. Yeah, really. The Australian I, guys, just say the Australian guys, the Australian guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brendan. Um what was that? Why is MVP not down there with him? It's ridiculous. Well, at the ringside with him, you mean? Yeah. I don't They're know. They're saying how, oh, we learned so much from him, and, and we went ahead and, you know, he was responsible for us getting this win tonight. And, you know, that you, you just heard commentary going on and on about MVP's influence, but he wasn't down there to offer any guidance. <laughs> it was just very odd. It is a little weird. I mean, I'm not mad. I don't. I guess I'm not as crazy about that as you are, but because I don't care if he's at ringside. But um, that mean, was just their entire painted story. I mean, that's that's what they were going on and on was MVP's tutelage and hmm. well, he already influence. taught them. He already taught them. He didn't need to be down there. I, maybe, but to me, it just seemed you know missing, especially since you have people like Zelina Vega who could be out there during six and eight man tag matches. Maybe so. they're trying to. Are they trying to? I mean, she's been there, right? Yeah. So they're not trying to limit the amount of bodies down there. I don't know. Yeah. But, MVP's um, been there too because he was already down there doing the opening segment. So right. Yeah. No, I don't know. That didn't bother me, but it is. A, that's a. That's to me is a nitpick. But you're right. You know, he could be a manager. Yeah. It's. It's. Well, that's what he's. It's supposed to be his new. You know, faction that he's building. Yeah. I mean, he. I, I don't know. He doesn't have to be out there, but yeah, normally a manager would be out there. I didn't get the the vibe that he's like officially this manager of them, but uh, he brought them in and he's sort of been the host and the face of Raw. I mean, that I kind of like. I think bringing MVP in and doing something with him so that there's somebody that it feels like is sort of hosting the night or being someone in charge of everything. You know, I like the idea of that. Um, so I kind of do like MVP. I think he's getting better in the role too. But, again, it's just there's so many other things that they could be doing. And, and I know that the thing is the money in the bank thing's a great idea. So, to me, it feels like they're saving these ideas that they have for the pay-per-views or the special events. You know, so for money in the bank, they're going to fight through the building. That's a great idea. That's really good. The, these are innovative things. But they really need to be innovative on TV because you're losing the audience. I mean, there's well, everybody's at home right now. Shouldn't you be thinking about it like, you know, if you look at this number and you think, well, that's how it is because of the COVID and people are just not interested in this. Shouldn't you be saying, no, fuck that. Everyone's at home. Every, no kids have school tomorrow. This number should go up. We should do some crazy shit on TV that people are going to be like, dude, have you not been watching wrestling on Mondays and then people are like what I haven't watched wrestling since back when uh, The Rock and Stone Cold were there or whatever that was I haven't I really haven't watched in a while oh you gotta see what they're doing dude like they're doing I mean there's no audience because of coronavirus there's no audience but they're doing this crazy shit blah 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 blah, blah. but instead you, you have half the wrestling fans who have been watching saying oh god I'm tired and I want to go to sleep and this sucks 
So you're you're completely backwards on everything right now in WWE. Looking at it like a crutch, like oh no, it's Corona. Because over there on TNT World in AEW, despite the fact that their ratings really haven't changed much, they're somewhere between six hundred thousand and nine hundred thousand, like they've been since they started anyway. Um, but they're actually putting in a big effort, and they're not losing their audience. Jake, they're not losing their audience. So that's the thing for the guy that said, like, you know, oh, the million thing or whatever the hell. Yeah, well, they're not really losing their audience to me. The numbers are a little bit down, but they ain't losing their audience. The WWE is losing their audience. Yeah, absolutely. This is crazy. I mean, there's something going on here. and No doubt about it. I mean, and people are just, you know, close to a mass exodus as you could get. They need They're to leaving. hire somebody. They don't want they, to watch anymore. They need to bring in some people. They need to hire people. They need to. Uh, Vince McMahon needs to. I don't know, man. Open his open his goddamn mind up. Open his head up. Listen like to somebody out, new and fresh. Before the the COVID situation, well, yeah, so it's been can't going use on that as an excuse. Yeah, it's been going on before COVID. They were losing viewers and subscribers left and right. I yes. think the only reason WrestleMania had so many network subscribers, you know, obviously, was only for WrestleMania, and we won't see that number continue. Now you're gonna see a drop off. Yeah, absolutely. I would think. I mean, you, but you would think that no, aren't you bored at home? The WWE Network, look at all this shit to watch. Go back and watch all this shit, guys. You pay nine ninety nine. You're at home bored. Let's go. All right, here's the donation. Let's play this. Uh, yeah, if you want to email me, Joe Cronin Show at yahoo.com. The links to all my stuff are down below. And uh, I'm trying to stay awake here. Raw has put me into nappy time. You've got a new subscriber. Um. Yeah, it's like a play in middle school that sucks, RJ Scum. That's a great comment. Um, Lashika, what's going on? Uh, thanks for subbing to the channel. Uh, Dukes of Hazard racist show. What man? I loved that show when I was a kid. What? How is it racist? Demo Duke boys. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. So I heard Crystal was on the corner drinking Chinese dick for money to get an AIDS test for Tommy after that bum ass banged him. Oh my god, AJ Adams. Yeah, I, I really haven't seen Dukes of Hazard since I was like nine years old, really, but it was awesome when I was a kid. I didn't think it was racist, though. I mean, they had the General Lee with the Confederate flag on it, but that didn't mean anything when I was a kid. I had no idea what the fuck that was. I just thought it was awesome. I thought the, I thought the car looked cool, and I thought the flag looked cool. I didn't know what it meant or anything. Yeah. Um, did they ever I do think that any... was more Southern pride than racist. Well, were, I mean, weren't they always committing fucking shenanigans and the fucking, the police are trying to arrest them. The, yeah. the Roscoe guy was a piece of shit. Like, I mean, if, how, if anything, I mean, it was about like, kind of, wasn't it about like, they were moonshiners and yeah, like they were doing illegal shit and the cops were chasing them all the time. And then they got out, they got out of it somehow. And I mean, it was unbelievable and stupid, like, but it wasn't. Was it racist, really? That wasn't a black guy on the show? Is that why it was racist? I mean, what did they do? Yeah. I like what uh, Abel says in the chat, Solace Jr. He says, if you think the Dukes of Hazzard uh, is racist, it proves you haven't experienced true racism. Yeah, Absolutely. If you think that's a great point. Yeah, if you think Dukes <laughs> of Hazzard is racist, you might be a retard. Um, that show is like fucking... You, like, there was nothing in that show. Unless I'm missing something. Like, there was some kind of, like, racial words ever said. Can you fu can you tell me the scene in Dukes of Hazard that's racist? I know some stuff doesn't age well, like things that were okay to joke about. Like you'll see a lot of '90s movies being like, "Oh, faggot this and homo that," and obviously things have changed in the past fifteen, twenty years. So language has come, you know, to accepting certain terms is no longer allowed to be said. Obviously, I mean, I'm really curious. I want to know if this. Uh, I want to know if Dukes of Hazard. But I don't really remember Boss Hog being a racist. And <laughs> well, Bo Boss Hog isn't he the bad guy? Yeah, he was. He was there. You See, know, even if he villain. was, even if he was a uh, racist, well, he's a piece of shit in the show. Yeah, always screwing them over and trying to screw their business. And I mean, listen, man, you come up, but the producer did know what it meant. Oh, oh! So you're just mad about the flag? You're a fucking pussy, man. Come on, don't be a pussy in my chat. Oh, boo-hoo the flag. Who cares? The fuck? It was a show in the '80s or whatever. What the fuck? Like the <laughs> what the fuck? Like, dude, everybody in the South has Confederate flags. Black people in the South have Confederate flags because now they a lot of people there don't don't think it means the same thing. Now they mean 
They they, they had so <laughs> uh, listen. They had Southern pride when they were trying to keep the slaves. Well, they lost the war, but they still have they still have uh, Southern pride. That's why black guys go around flying the Confederate flag in the South, and you're like, why is the black guy wearing a Confederate flag? Well, the reason is because now it doesn't really stand for like oppressing the blacks and stuff like that. It stands for South pride, Southern pride. Yeah. So oh you, oh shit, Joe, that we did mess up. It is a racist show. Why? Uh, Bandito Loco said apparently you and I never saw the episode where the brothers they go and they rape a black woman and then they they hang her wearing Klansman outfits. Oh my god. So we never we the never saw that, that episode, was. but damn, they they are racist. So. Man, I'll tell you what, you like, there's like <laughs> that, that's got to be on the DVD. There's like there's black kids and little black kids that watch that show that love that show. Asian kids watch that show, uh, and they thought to themselves, "Wow, I hope I don't drive that bad someday." But you will, you will. Uh, no, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's the generally the greatest fucking car ever. I love Texan says I've got multiple rebel flag tattoos and I don't hate black people. You dumb fuck. Yeah, this is the greatest so. fucking car you've ever seen in your life. Okay. I don't care any, fucking white, black or fucking Korean. You can drive this car. This is yours. White, black. Wh- it doesn't matter. Hispanic, Mexican, whatever you are. This car is for you, man. This is a badass fucking car that kicks ass. It's the fucking General Lee and it's fucking awesome. And the show wasn't racist, at least that I remember. I don't remember though. Last time <laughs> I watched it, I was like scenes. ten or uh. something. Yeah, we're gonna put, they're gonna pull up the scene where they're like, "Hey man, we can try to we can try to outrun the cops, but some n words might try to." Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh say, no, no, no! Never mind. I take it back. The show was racist. <laughs> we we screwed up. <laughs> man, you pull out a racist bad. scene, and I'll fucking suck your cock, man. All right, yeah, you, you, Jake and Joe love the racist Dukes of Hazard episode where they. <laughs> You know, I'm from, they burned down a black school. It's I'm not like, intimidated. Oh my fucking, we won, man. You Joe, know, I'm what not, did we do? dude, I'm not fucking intimidated by this, Jake, because we won the war. We're the North. I'm from Boston. We're in the North. We won. Yeah. We beat the fuck out of these people. What are we fucking scared of? We didn't oh, rape no. our slaves. We just let our women sleep in them. Yeah, we fucking gave our <laughs> women to the slaves to have sex with them. Like, I mean, come on, dude. We beat these people. What, are you scared of them? You scared of their little fucking flag on their car? Why? We beat them. Ha 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 ha! And they're the ones that had all the guns, allegedly, right? I yeah. never let my gun get taken. Salt will rise again. Salt will rise again. Yeah, what, are they going to rise again and lose again, you fucking idiots? So, like, what the fuck are you scared about with this fucking car, you dildos? Yeah. Um, anyway, that was probably my favorite part of Raw, honestly. This is my favorite bar to ride right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, I, I, I wore a Dukes of Hazard t shirt in high school <laughs> for a whole year. Like every week I had two different Dukes of Hazard t shirts. And if you fucking now you can probably find my like photos in the photo album and be like, he's a racist. Like you know, like and you're like, no, it's just a TV show and it was fun and I watched it. I don't know what the fuck. It's a stupid flag. Everybody likes Daisy Duke. Oh my god. Jesus. I love that fucking car. <laughs> love that fucking car, man. Listen. Most people that I know love that shit. They're not racist at all. I mean, the flag is dumb, you know, like, obviously what it stood for then. But I think that, I think a lot of Southern people, he, well, here's the problem. Here's the answer, Jake. You know what the problem is with the Confederate flag? Here's the problem. I'm going to tell you all the truth right now. I'm going to tell you the most realest thing there is. Most people in the South see the Confederate flag now as Southern pride. They don't see it as a racist symbol or a racial symbol. They see it as Southern pride nowadays. So they grew up with Southern pride. They didn't grow up with slavery and stuff. They grew up with Southern pride and that the flag was a good thing. So those people are all, they mean well. They mean well. Confederate flag, the South. Black, white, doesn't matter who you are. You live in the South, this is you. This is part of, you know, the American flag, number one. And then we've got the heritage of the Confederate flag that we believe is the Southern blah, blah. But, but... There's also a crew, a crew of people, a, good, a little chunk of white people down there that are racist. And they happen to be also people who like to tout the Confederate flag. So when you're confused about what, what the flag is, and then you see those southern people who are racist waving the flag around, or people that are racist and support the flag, well, that, that, that brings back those old memories of that flag and how bad it can be and what it meant. 
So now you have a convoluted issue uh, of people saying that it's racist and then it's not and now it is. But I think the consensus now seems to be that it is. Like you can't like there was a guy the other day, do you see that? He was he had the scarf of uh his local flag or something like that, but it wasn't the Confederate yeah, flag. I didn't catch all the details. Dude, he got I... shit on. It was a it's a flag for the state of Somebody in the chat helped me out. I don't know, Mississippi or something. And the flag looks like the Confederate flag, but it's not the Confederate flag. And he was wearing it on as a ma as a mask for COVID nineteen. And he was getting attacked by people. And he's like, "Well, it's not the Confederate flag." And they basically shamed him into like, "Well, don't you think that was a bad idea to wear this?" So what do you mean you think it was a bad idea to wear this? It's your state flag. It's not a Confederate flag. And even if it was, is that really? Holy fuck, it's the Nazi flag. The Confederate flag is now, I guess, the Nazi flag. Like, what the fuck? We beat the Nazis. News flash. We beat the Nazis. The people <laughs> from the South. The people from the South. People in the South. White people in the South. War. Confederate and American flags. In World War II, while killing the Nazis. <laughs> but 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 it's like what? <laughs> how is it the Nazi flag? But here, but but there are, but there are Jake, there are some racist white people in the South that, that do use. that do fly the Nazi flag in their little houses in their basement or something creepy, and then next to it is the Confederate flag. And so those people also bring a bad name to it. So you have all this weird shit going on where, where white southern people who were not racist, who wanted to kill the Germans to free the Jews and weren't racist and wanted to help the blacks, the Jews, and whoever else the Nazis wanted to kill and help their own country, wore the Confederate flag and the American flag and went into World War II and wanted to kill some Nazis. <laughs> but that, but now you have other white Americans who are like, oh, I want to be a Nazi. And then they have the Confederate flag, too. So now you have these two different versions of people waving around the Confederate flag, and it's fucking convoluting everybody. Anyway. Turns it into a shitstorm. So, I know Texan wants to call in. He's, he's all fired up. Well, but. I think I basically explained it, to be honest. I think I explained it. I'm ready to cut you, a promo. You nailed it. He's going crazy. But listen. He is. Listen, George Carlin once said, these are just symbols, and I leave symbols to the symbol-minded. Um, it's just a fucking flag, everybody. Absolutely. Um, and uh, shout-out to Jerome in the chat, new member. He said, Joe, thank you. I work overnights. Your show helps keep me uh, sane and keep my mind off of things in the world right now. So Thank you. All right. Well, thank listen. you, Jerome, for becoming a member. You guys can do that. Help support the show. Click the Join button down below. You know, it's a, it's an alternative to Patreon. You get a nice little uh, emblem in the chat. Let's everybody know that you're an official JCS member. You can, you know, there's two options for three ninety nine or five ninety nine a month. But eventually, you unlock my face if you stick with it long enough. So should be popping up for us soon. Uh, let's go, Texan. You want to rage, bro? You want us to beat your ass again, Texan, Texas? You want us to kick your ass again, Texas? You know what I do? I celebrate the American flag because that's the country I'm in. You weird fucking Confederate flag, secondary flag fucker. You secondary flag, you second place flag motherfucker. No, but seriously, there's nothing wrong with the goddamn General Lee and Dukes of Hazard. God damn it. But you are a second place flag. I got to say that. What else we got? Oh, <laughs> a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. Some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> I'm happy AJ Styles buried Humberto Carrillo. He sucks. Get him of my TV. Hail Metal Forever is a $3 donator. I'm happy AJ Styles buried Humberto Carrillo. He sucks. Get him off my TV. Uh, Hail Metal. I guess I agree. <laughs> yeah, it was I thought he weird. was going to be like, oh, good job. Show a sign of respect. Yeah, right, because he was going to be the good guy. They, well, no, it was funny because Bobby <laughs> Lashley kicked the shit out of him. Yeah. And then AJ uh, Styles kicked the shit out of him. And, and that was just double them. funny. I started laughing at that. Plus the white Shit guy bomb. one. Fucking. Am I the only one that actually like Vink and Thorn beating Ricochet and Alexander? It make the tag team division more competitive and sports like where any team can win on any given night instead of just the obvious team winning all the time. Am I the only one that actually thinks Vink and Thorne beating Ricochet and Alexander make the tag team division more competitive? No, I like I like that, that they came in and won because they somebody listen, 
Yeah, they're going to be a, a new group, you know, that, with MVP being their manager, it seems. And, and you know, I, I think that that was a smart booking idea to get them, you know, some heat right off the start against Ricochet, who's rather credible. Well, plus know, they've lost. The greatest push, but... Ricochet's and, and those two guys have lost a, a few times to other people, so... I mean, they've lost a good amount, but it, I think it still works to get a win over them yeah, since but they're what I mean established is, if this with the new, audience. If this new team had come in and lost to them, it would have been like, oh, well, these guys are 50-50, and now they just beat these new guys, so these new guys suck. So they had to win. And they won pretty decisively, too. I mean, it was less than five minutes altogether. Yeah, man. I agree. I mean, we got a super kick, big boot, and that was it. I hope my, um, we're going to move on from the flag topic, but I hope that, um, but I also want people to remember there are some scary groups and racist groups that have scared some black people down there over the years, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, you name it. And, you know, sometimes when they do some terrible shit to some black people or they intimidate black people, um, African Americans, uh, sometimes. Tommy laughs. Yeah, Tommy does laugh, and his family probably is involved in it. But um, they they do sometimes they put they actually put the Confederate flag on people's houses. They spray paint stuff. They have it on their truck as they drive away. I mean, we've seen a lot of incidents over the years. So I'm just trying to say to everybody that you have to understand there's a perspective to the flag to everybody. So you have to remember there may be some great people who just grew up that hey, this means the South. I love it. That's why white people like it, and some. African American people like the Amer- the Confederate flag too because they grew up with it as a symbol of oh it just means the South and like I always loved the South and I, it's where I live and you know I like this symbol and it's, that's what it means to me. But then there's other people who see it as oppression and you know the bad guys you know. So you have to realize that there's all these different perspectives of the flag and that just because someone flies the flag doesn't mean they're racist. They probably aren't. Um, But you also have to remember that just because you see the flag as a positive, good thing, that there's other people out there that are scared of it. And that to them, it's like kind of a worrisome thing because they never know if it's the good people waving it or the bad people waving it. So that's why it's so convoluted. But a lot of us don't think about that. We all grab either, oh, you're a racist if you have the Confederate flag or, oh, you're a, you know, it's just a symbol. It's It's a good symbol. It doesn't mean anything bad. You know, the really, the truth is in the middle, and that's why there's so much arguing over it. So I think if people just calm down and remember that it really means something different to a lot of people. Um, but in the end, it did represent something that was a little bizarre. <laughs> so, you know, it, you got to remember that. But But anyway, that's why there's so much fighting over it. And, you know, especially when you're raised well by your parents not to be racist and to be a good person... And they tell you about, and you know, you look up at the symbol as a good, strong symbol, and it's a great, positive thing. And then when you're 40, all of a sudden, the whole world wants to tell you you're racist now, and you're you're going to get defensive. So, like all these different perspectives are why there's so much fighting about this right now, everywhere, but also even in the chat right now. So, uh, I don't know. There's my little fucking speech. Try to love each other, and you know what I mean. Don't fucking judge people until you really know who they really are no matter what, and uh, try to understand each other, even if you disagree, and uh, we should be okay. Donation time. Donation time. What's up, you legends? Joe, if you do happen to bring back retro reviews, I suggest you check out the May 12th, 2005 episode of SmackDown. It's where Booker T and Kurt Angle start their program and where Kurt wants to have bestiality sex with Charmel. Oh my god, yeah, Kurt Angle wants to have blinded fate. Thank you for the $4, blinded fate. Yeah, he wants to have bestiality sex with Charmel. <laughs> yeah, he wants what to go all fuck? out. He's, he's ready to fuck a horse in that one. Wait. Is this real? I don't remember him, the bestiality thing. Yeah, it was a very, very weird backstage scene. Do you remember this, by the way? Be- yes, you're right. Was this another Vince thing? I forget now. I mean, I, I, I remember that think... this is weird. I know we've talked about this before, but. What the fuck, dude, was going on? <laughs> like, what is. What is going on here? You see this on the screen right now? What is this? Oh my god, dude! What the fuck is happening? Is this is that Charmel? 
Yeah, when he pinned her down. Oh my god, dude. I guess I wasn't watching it this time. Yeah, he said he wanted to have bestiality sex. Because remember, there was a... With her. In my entire life, since 1987, I've probably missed a total of two years of WWE. A total. Like, not... Not consecutively, but over all that time, I probably missed two years' worth of WWE, 1987 to now. And I missed this. I missed this whole thing. Charmel's hot, though. I'll say that. See, I guess Vince was looking for the word bestial, like meaning like beast-like yeah. or uh, like of animal. He wanted Kurt to talk about how carnal, animalistic sex you know, would be with Charmel. But oh, the writers... Jesus told Vince about bestiality and he didn't believe them. What? He didn't be- Vince didn't it says the bestiality part was actually Vince not believing the writers when they told him the word he was looking for was bestial. So oh they told him God. no the, the word you want is this word and he's like no I said bestiality. <laughs> and they're like that's not what that means and he's like I know what it means Good god damn Lord. it. So oh my god. We all have our vices. Mine just happen to be gutter sluts. That's what it says. All right. Did you say gutter sluts? Yes. I don't know, man. Can we talk about how uh, I want to sleep with Charmel? <laughs> I mean, can we talk about Booker T's wife? You and you and Charmel going to get it on? Holy, no, well, no, but you know, obviously, but going to get it on. I'm just saying that Jesus. Hello. I was just staring at, at... I'm just... I'm sorry. I've forgotten everything I'm talking about. Oh, You're my just God. You're off in your own little world. I am. I Just shut up. I'm, I'm looking at Charmel right now. Damn, man. Which one of us is the high one here? I'm telling you. I'm not high. I'm just staring at Charmel, man. <laughs> just leave me alone. I'm thinking about stuff. Holy shit. There's a lot that comes to mind. What the fuck? That's not. That's really not professional. What you just did. I think that's fucked up. It's terrible. So are you ready for Money in the Bank? I'm still you, looking at Charmel right now. Oh, you're still distracted. I mean, I'm sorry. The eye roll, the mm, bad attitude. That's what. Yeah, Joe that's wants. dude. That's wow. Joe wants to be submissive. Yeah, right now. I don't know why. This is weird. I'm usually ferocious. <laughs> <laughs> You're usually bestial. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, oh my god! Look at look at Booker <laughs> T looking here. He's looking good, man, with that crown on. King Booker, Booker you want to see Booker? We're gonna give you the crown, Charmel. and then we're gonna bury you. <laughs> I'm gonna go inside of Charmel. I'm gonna book in her. I'm going to book in Charmel. Man. Good job, Booker. He gave her the spin of Rooney. She's gorgeous. Five times, five times, five times. <laughs> Holy shit. Good job, Booker. Good job, Booker. King Booker. Like, I can't. I like Booker T. Uh, I can't great believe King that. Booker. I'm going to go Kurt Angle on Charmel. I am going to get. I'm going to get on. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose my mind, man. <laughs> She ain't shit, though, waxed. about her face, someone said. Oh, really? Jesus. Joe Blumpkin break? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? I think she's pretty. All right, anyway, I'm sorry, Jake. What were you saying before I lost my mind for a minute? That, uh, I don't know. But we'll, we'll, what have we not? Oh, I know what I haven't uh, brought up yet. Yeah. I, I started to mention it before, but I liked Cedric Alexander, you know, Ricochet losing. That made sense. So, all right. It wasn't a bad match. Didn't really do much for me there because it didn't really show off a lot of athleticism. And, you know, it was pretty short. But I was intrigued with the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. What did you think of that match? I think me and Leah look better than Booker and his wife in this photo. Hands down. I you think just we, need crowns. I think, yeah, I think you, we're... You I need think, your uh, king's crown. I think we're doing pretty good right here. You, you got to have that, you know, you, you put a couple you, photos. Yeah, you put a crown on me right here, and I'm going to rival Booker T. Put a fucking crown on my head right here. You need the robe, too. Yeah, you put a robe on me and some nipple rings on Leah, and we're ready to go. All right? You, we're Maybe coming some face for tattoos. 
All right, I've lost my mind. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm I'm really retarded at this point. Um, I so what do you think of the Street Profits match? I hate flags, though. I'll tell you that after today's discussion, I hate them. Yeah, who the no, fuck we're not cares? Fuck uh, flags. Report on flags anytime soon fuck, again. That was fuck flags. I that was like brutal. Them. Fuck your flags. I hate them. Um, I hate. I really do. I don't like fucking everybody's fucking. I hate all flags. The I, you know, I'm Irish. The people that wear the Irish, I'm Irish pride. Oh, fuck yourself. We're in America. Um, you know, just get the fuck out of here. Oh, Italian pride. Oh, go fuck yourself. You're fucking stupid, fat, and greasy. And then the people are like, oh, you know, Puerto Rican flags always dangling in the mirror. Why don't you go back there then, you fucking idiot, and get knifed? Um, I'm sorry, Jake. <laughs> go ahead. I was, uh, I was disgruntled, though, at the ending. I thought they had a really good match, but of course, non title, you knew the Viking Raiders were going to win. That's um, it. Yeah, basically, you know? yeah. It was pretty... I, I just don't like it when the tag champs lose non title matches and. It, not even just the tag champs, any champion. If it's if it's non title, they, they shouldn't be losing. You know, it, it, yeah. it, they should be continually winning, unless it's that one off, you know, very special circumstance because they're pushing somebody or they have some big plan in mind. That's not the case with this. They just want to, you know, keep this feud going. So, Lewis, you say yeah. that again, I will kill you. All right, <laughs> don't you ever say that again. I will tear oh, your we're throat still on flags. out. Yeah, I the Bruins throw, fan. I will Ouch. tear your throat out. Oh my god, I want to rip your tongue out. Right now, if you weren't a member, only because you're a member. Otherwise, I would rip your tongue out. I want to. I want to just choke you. Oh my god, I want to. Oh my god, I want to put you in the movie. Fucking Joe's gonna be a Buccaneers fan soon. I want to put you in Spaceballs, but with the alternate ending where where you run out of air and then you can't buy any and then you choke to death. <laughs> the whole planet I'm runs so out. So mad. Oh my Suck. god. Suck. Suck. Yeah. Oh, hey, a little bubbly. bit of the bubbly. That's it. Robbie that Hyde. Bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> also, thanks for the advice earlier today on Anything Goes About My Channel. Good to see you guys are still up and running and somehow putting up with this shit show minus true and good to see you're doing well, Jake. That's right. F all flags except the Boston Bruins flags. I agree. That's right. Or the Patriots flag or the Red Sox flag. And fuck, I'll even throw the Celtics in there with their basketball ass. Robbie Hyde, thank you for the $3, man. Says hi to Jake. Uh, he's happy you're here, Jake. Uh, we, we, Jake is going to go soon. He's got only a limited time here, and there's not much to talk about anyway. Robbie Hyde, your channel's doing well, man. We'll talk more about it later. Hit me up. Yeah, Seriously, I'll talk to you about it up here. Uh, Jet718, thank you, sir. Don't forget, this week we'll be back to gaming again. A whole bunch of gaming over on Twitch. So, hey, thanks for the support there. Again, I hate all flags. I hate them all. The Irish flag, I'm Irish. I don't like it. Fuck it. Irish pride my ass. Yeah, Tommy hates all flags too, so. Oh, no. Flags, Jake. Oh, sorry. Hard of hearing. Um, but Jet718, thanks for the subscription. Probably don't see more than I see. In, in, in New England, I see Irish flags and Puerto Rican flags the most. How about you any type of? Stuff I, I usually never see Confederate flags, but I will see the "Don't Tread on Me" ones every now and again. Yeah, and I think that's more racist than the Confederate flag. Jerome Spicer, thanks for being a sponsor, man, and becoming a member down below. Yeah, on I read YouTube. His comment before. There he is. Um, thank you, Jerome. Uh, yeah, you know, I see. Um, yeah, you don't see many of those out here. I don't see many of the. Uh, I see the Dukes of Hazard ones though. Like that's that's not to get back into that again, but I do see that. Um, but that's again, you watch that show. It's not a fucking. It's not that. Uh, don't tread on me. Trump yeah. flags are the best. Super chat party. BD skeleton. Thanks for the dollar. You know what I would love to do is put a is is to have the Trump flag. Just for the fun of it, like I don't even. I'm not. I didn't vote for him. I don't care. But I would, I would have the Trump flag just to get into fights with people. You know <laughs> just, I mean? just to incite, like, a yeah, riot. yeah, just to incite a fight or something like that. Just like and get out of the car. Somebody's like throws an egg at me, and like somebody says "fuck you," and then I get out of the car. And I'm like, what? What the fuck? What? What about it? What's the matter? What's the problem? Your fucking flag, you fucking piece of shit ass fucking president, piece of shit. Okay, dude. It's America, man. I'm just su just supporting the president with a flag. It's not a big deal. You're going to be all right? You're a fucking piece of shit! Why am I pe I mean, like, it's just a flag, bro. It's not a big deal. I mean, whatever. Yeah, it is a big deal. Because he's a fucking racist piece of shit! <laughs> oh, yeah, well, how's he, like, what has he done that, that's racist? You know, he's done everything. Where have you been? You uh, see I've, his hat? I'm just saying, like, 
what has he done that makes him racist? I'm trying to figure this out. I just, you don't know? He's trying to keep everyone out of the country. What do you mean he's trying to keep everyone out of the country? Everybody, who's everybody? Everyone, like anybody that's not a white guy, maybe? Um, I mean, he just banned the Chinese travel, but that's because of coronavirus. The Chinese were allowed to come into the country while he was president for three years. What do you mean? Does he he likes Asian people? <laughs> Don't fuck with me, man! Don't... <laughs> and then they fucking overload into fucking hell. It's the fucking people. Um, but they could have argued that he wouldn't let the black people in his apartment buildings back in the day, but that was because he wanted the money to go up. Um, but they want you know, I don't know. So I just, I just have the flag just to fight with people. I do the same thing when Obama was president too. You just put an Obama flag on your fucking car and then just let people just tell you why he's, why he's bad. And they'd be like, well, he's trying to organize a global system to create against, uh, the, dissem the dissemination of white people of something. And I'm like, what? I don't see that happening at all. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. And just like no matter where you are, change the flag to fight with people. Like so then when you get when you're in Massachusetts, put the Trump one up. And then when you cross over to like New Hampshire, put the fucking Obama one up and then just fuck with people and then make a YouTube just channel. Just alternate. Yeah, flags. and then 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 make a YouTube channel called Fucking with People's Asses. <laughs> <laughs> and you just fucking troll everybody. You fight with everybody. Or you have an Obama 08 flag with a Trump 2020 flag. <laughs> oh, uh, my God. The same flagpole. Or even better, how about a confusing flag <laughs> that says, you know I'm voting for him 2020. <laughs> and then the flag is like. Not in red or blue, just purple text. Just you know? yeah, all in all in like purple and <laughs> white or something or black. Yeah, the whole flag's black and the white lettering. You know I'm voting for him 2020. And both sides say that. And so people are like looking at the flag, you know, at a red light, and they're like, I'm voting for oh, he's gotta be one of those Trump people. I'm voting for yeah, him. Yeah, because they want it to side with their views and beliefs, and so they're gonna assume right uh, away oh, no, that it falls in their like, ideals. Oh wait, no, it's not a Trump is it? oh maybe he's a Bernie guy. Maybe it's a Bernie Sanders support. No, what I can't tell What the fuck is he? What I don't know what to do I guess just <laughs> 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 I'm voting you know I'm voting for him twenty twenty. Oh my god, dude. I want to make that flag so bad, and it just fucking never says anything about any candidate. Oh, really my God, dude. Just him slash her. Fuck on me, Black Lab says. See, that'd be great, <laughs> too. You're trying to fuck on me. <laughs> dude, that's a great bumper sticker. <laughs> fuck on me. That's a fucking hilarious that bumper trying sticker. trying to fuck on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. People are like, may the fourth be with you. Go fuck yourself. Fuck Star Wars. It's dead. Um, it's Cinco de Mayo, motherfucker. Let's go. Yeah, now we're part. Now of it's time. Now it's a real day. May the fourth go fuck <laughs> WWE yourself. gave their Cinco de Mayo tribute tonight with that <laughs> gauntlet match. The yeah, burial. that was the Cinco de Mayo <laughs> tribute. The ethnic burial gauntlet match. Yeah, and then in the end, it was the Alamo. And then we had two white guys beat the hell out of you know, <laughs> our black tag team. That was it's like oh oh. Ricochet. I mean, it was too funny. Right? Losing again. We're calling it the Minority Rumble, and then the one white guy shows up. <laughs> and they threw Nia Jax out of the ring. <laughs> Then they had the minority, you know, gauntlet match, <laughs> you know, the ethnic graveyard. And then we had Cedric and Ricochet lose to the white guys. We had the Street Profits lose to the Norwegian white guys. You know, it just it just keeps adding up. Duh. And uh, we had Charlotte beat Liv, so that automatically... <laughs> that's another blonde, blue-eyed. I will vote Bush flag. That's funny, too, because like, that's just bizarre. Him, um, her, Michelle Obama. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, or another flag that'd be good is I use the Patriot Act to have my mother choke to death in Guantanamo Bay. That's a great, that's a great, <laughs> that's a, that's a one, thinker. That's, that's a real That's a thinker. crowd pleaser. Did you hear Alex Jones on Corrupted Nation? I put up the video oh, from yes. Monetize This. We have, we have food for a little while, but I can, you know, we, we eat our neighbors. <laughs> Alex I'm Jones. not going hungry. My my girls aren't going hungry. Alex like, Jones is going to eat his talking? fucking kids. Doesn't dude. he have like hundreds of tubs of cheese? That that infinite yeah. cheese tub. Yeah. 
Have you seen those? Oh, yeah. The food tubs, like 100 pounds of cheese. I got a ton of it. It's called uh, fucking, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I got four months worth of shit. Like some, Yeah, so I thought he had, you know, three years worth of food, he said at one point. <clears throat> he probably, he did say three years. Yeah, he said he was going to eat his neighbors. Yeah. Um, which is something I actually He's said He's like, my girls ago. aren't going hungry. For, doesn't mention his son. But. I'll eat the goddamn neighbors. They look good. I ain't fucking around. I'm, not, I'm just being honest. I, I'll eat you. I'll fucking eat you. Like, yeah, dude, they, they always say, oh my God. You know, it's worse to have hungry neighbors than it is to have enemies. So, the bottom line is, he's got guns. He can go hunt. He's that shouldn't be a problem. My 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 thing is, I don't have a gun. I have a rapid fire crossbow that will kill you. Yes, and I have a recurve bow, and several bows, and 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 the chance that I, as a non trained hunter, uh, not non-hunter, untrained, all that, can go into my backyard in the woods and be able to kill a deer, hit it in the heart or whatever, to incapacitate it, to eat it, would be really tough. And in the end, you know, I think I could probably just grab a neighbor. You could. Well, yeah. See, if you're thinking on the neighbor scale, you don't have to start with neighbors. You know, if, if you're going right to human, because you'll get probably more meat consumption than you would out of a small animal, obviously. You know, a squirrel doesn't go a long way. You need a lot of them. So, you know, you, you send your wife out there like an incel yeah. thirst trap, and uh, when, when she finds one of the guys start flirting with her, you bring him back to the house, and you guys eat tacos. Oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, use Leah. I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. Get Leah to go out and be like, hmm. Yeah. Be a little thirst trap. I don't know. I don't have a husband. I have two kids, but, like, they'll stay out of the way. I have a basement. We lock out, lock the door. We can fuck all night. Go and the then they, and you're waiting there with a the oh hammer. Oh, my God. And then I'm waiting there with a hammer, and we kill the guy. And with I the plastic already laid down. Oh, my God. You're Because right. that's what kind of caring husband you Jake, are. I had no... I didn't even think about this. You're smart as hell. This is how bad Raw is. I'm just saying. Oh, my God. You're right. This is unbelievable. Yeah. Your murder um, scene is already easily clean upable. She'll appreciate that. Yeah. Talk about a Mother's Day gift. You guys are eating for a while. Psh, you're set. I have four months of food, so I'd have four. I'd have four months to kill a deer. If I couldn't kill a deer in four months, you know, then it's time. But you know, most of my neighbors are armed, and some of them are cops, so it would be a tough battle. Yeah, that's a that's a not but like so easy you said, fight. But like you said, it would we we put out we send Leah out. If Leah just kind of like teases, yeah, the people. thirst trap. Get her back out there. We we'll have to get her out there, get her in shape, get her. Uh, I'm not saying she has to know the way of the bro job. I'm just saying she has to entice. Remember, no couple, hands on. Yeah, I think I think Leah could do it. You know, but once yeah. they see a bunch of guys coming into your house and and not leaving, yeah, they might get suspicious. So then they might have to send, Leah might have to send you out there in a mini skirt hmm. just to keep things on a level playing field. Well, I could definitely bring the gay guys in. That's what I'm saying. That's why we got you with a mini skirt, You're right, and a shaved so. asshole. I know we don't have to bleach it, but I'll shaving. bring in the gay guys, and Leah can bring in the regular guys. And before you know it, if we had four to six men, I mean that should—that's last... a good ratio. That should cover That's you guys. You know, it lowers down the conspicuous nature of your crimes uh-huh. tenfold, at least. If you have six men, I would definitely eat the toast. Because then they just think it's an orgy at that point. Then they're just going to send you pamphlets, you know, like "Oh, pray to Jesus for your kids." You sinners, yeah, you know, but th- you can deal with that if they don't think you're murderers. I think we could pull this off. Like if you look, like if I, and I'd try different things. Like I have this facial hair right here. I'd try that facial hair right there, and if it didn't work, then I would shave my face like it is now, and I'd be like, all right, maybe go for the boy look. And then, and then Leah would obviously, she could wear something where her tattoo was sticking out more than there. You know, like where it was kind of showing off. You there know, you go. I, I think that really we could. uh yeah, they want you with the, the, the boy look. They want to try and knock a few numbers off your your you know your rings as much as possible. That's a great point. We'll get Leah to wear like something like where the straps, the spaghetti straps there that show the bat tattoo off. Yep. With the ring. We'll get her we'll put the ring back on her lip again. Yeah, yeah you we'll, in a mini skirt and her in a halter top. What yeah. more could you ask for? I'll even I'll even carry a dildo with me. Just to just to entice them even more. Yeah, this that was is the best a great part of idea. my whole day that my uh, my my sex wand arrived in the mail. This so. is a really healthy conversation. People are saying, and I think that we're having a. I mean, this is a really good conversation. I think this is. I, uh, I'm not kidding either. That's a that's a no. total truth nugget. I was really happy that my sex wand arrived in the mail today. You, oh, really? Yeah. Did you it's ever? My, it's my private Mother's Day gift to Courtney. How deep does it go? 
Oh, it's it's massive. It's 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 the Hitachi wand. You know the the. The, See, the ultimate I drill, don't know, man. Of Once you get one of those, though, I mean, you know, you're gonna really appear small to her now. Like you really, on, I, got over like, here. I don't know if I would do this. Well, there's a mini one too. You gotta. Yeah, but I mean, start you, small. Oh you know, my god. That. Well, that's not that bad. You're bigger than that thing, so. Oh, that's absolutely. Okay. But but hold on. I don't know if I can get it out of the bag this way. Uh, All right. Yeah. People it's... are saying that this is making them thirsty. Uh, oh my God! The there! Oh my God, Jake! Is she gonna? She's gonna, Jake! She's gonna! She's gonna! She's gonna come! That's, that's she's like gonna come! I don't care Are you gonna come? Saying. Are you feeling like you're gonna come? Are you feeling it? How do you feel? You feel like you're gonna come? He's gonna come! He's gonna come! He's gonna come! You know, ultimate advice for everybody out there. Your needs will be wow. taken care of when her needs are always taken care of. This is unbelievable what I'm seeing right now. I mean, that we just saw the device that Jake is going to use to play his bomb. wife. This is crazy. Remember crazy. when there was a shitty crowd like in Alabama, West Virginia, or Iowa, we would come on here and talk shit on the crowd for sucking. Yeah. I would gladly love to have those shitty crowds back versus what we are getting right now. Nebit the Jew, I 100% agree, man. Those shitty crowds. I mean, who would have thought it would ever get worse than those crowds, man? <laughs> Nebit, thanks for becoming a $5 shit bum, Nebit. Uh, yeah, who would have thought that it would get worse? Who would have thought that this would be going on? Dude, 2020 is a nightmare. This is a nightmare right now. We're in a fucking it's nightmare. A total disaster. This will go down as, unless there's a World War III, this is the worst year that we've ever experienced. Yeah, sanitize that. Joe, this is a very <laughs> serious question. When will part two of Joe and Tommy watch a porn together be on your Patreon? I honestly could just be dumb and not have seen it, but I want to see a part two of that hilarious audio clip of the two of you gang banging Debe. Uh, Tom Nook, what's up, Tom? I haven't compiled all the audio clips yet. In fact, one of the biggest problems was I forgot to clip so many of them. Like, we had so many and I forgot to clip them. Um, yeah, there was a few requests that were coming uh, over Twitter I saw. I need to get somebody who can clip stuff better. Like when I say that's a clip. Oh shit. Will you preview UFC 249 or live stream it? Uh Omar, I am going to be live for UFC 249, man. Yes, I will be covering it because I mean it's going to be probably more interesting than wrestling. So yes, we will be having a large UFC 249 uh party. Uh, Money in the Bank seems like it's going to be a crazy clusterfuck though. I I don't quite understand both ladder matches <clears throat> are happening at the same time. All right. So that's nuts. How the hell ever that's so going to work? wait, they're going to like cut back and forth between these two? I don't like... know. That's People are like, oh, they're they're concurring at the same time. And I'm like, I news to me. If I miss something, the chat will rectify that mistake if I'm way off to this part. Yeah, it's crazy. We need a heel and baby face announcer. I agree, man. Jay Frost, thank you for the donation, man. Yeah, I've been saying it for weeks. Uh, before AEW even used Chris Jericho, I wanted it. I want a heel announcer and, and a face. I, I wish I could beg the WWE to put me on heel commentary. I would love to be on heel commentary with, uh, I guess, Tom Phillips. Well, who else is it going to be? You know, and then Joe, and then Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe, Tom Phillips, and me. And we get Tom Phillips to come out of his shell a little bit. I think we could have a hell of a goddamn announced team. But they need, or anybody, they need somebody to be heel, but be good at it in WWE. Because right now it's it's a mess. And we'll see what happens, but God damn. Pour me a beer. You've got Kid a 420, subscriber. thank you for uh, subscribing, bro. Appreciate that. We got a, uh, wow, we were, holy fuck, are we behind? Yeah, Matt said it. Uh, Michael Cole said on SmackDown that the matches will be happening at the same time. Oh my, what? So I wasn't crazy. Oh my Give God. Hell yeah. Alice to Black you, is Steve the only Rowe. logical choice for winning on Sunday. Also, Charlotte isn't a draw for NXT. Either put the title back on Rhea or put it on IO. I figured the Jinder tweet was fake. Hashtag fuck Vince. Yeah, Matt the Misfit. Thank you, bro. 
and yeah, I, I agree. That's you know, Alistair Black should probably win. I mean, who the hell else cares otherwise? Um, and yeah, Charlotte is it's whatever. It doesn't. She's born. My name is Kane, and I'm donating. <laughs> Vince McMahon, you are fined 10 credits for a violation of the verbal morality statute. What's up, Joe and Jake? <laughs> I had to feed my mom and stepdad an edible cookie tonight just to watch Raw. These oh. shows needs the crowds back badly. And you think AJ will win? Um. AJ will win Money in the Bank. Um, it's possible, man. But I'm hoping that... Uh... I think it's going to be Aleister Black. I really do hope it's Aleister Black. Kalel Bama, although it could be a payback thing for, you know, AJ after a loss to The Undertaker. Kalel Bama, what thank you, man. That's possible. Oh, I'd like to see a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Want yeah. some bubbly? Go Look Alistair. at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> Lashley versus Lesnar at SummerSlam is being called the Blacker versus Cracker. Oh, oh, no. Well, that's not bad, AJ Adams, actually. Cracker Jack. I call it boring as shit if that happens. They were supposed to build up Bobby Lashley to be his next opponent. We were, I was talking about that on Out of Nowhere. Ugh. And Aleister Black cut a great promo tonight. I really liked it. Yeah, good promo by Aleister. Yeah, was, that was a good part. You know, it, it, he asked how how he felt to be buried because it certainly didn't make him humble. And If you get back Super up you know, and you throw me off the roof, I'll take you down. Party. Yeah, it was good stuff from him. Joe and Jake, much love, guys. What did you think of the affirmative action battle royal? Jake, come back to the show. I need the rub. Spaz Phoenix, thank you for the five dollars <laughs> Canadian baby. We can barely get him on this show. Yeah. Uh, but I appreciate that, bro. Um, affirmative action battle royal. You mean the gauntlet, the minority gauntlet? Yeah, exactly. And the one Spaz started one. reviewing movies too. You know, mm. he's, he's working through the. You know, the Godzilla series currently, so Good check God. that out too if you want a little reprieve from wrestling. I remember when I used to do movie reviews on here or on my other channel, and God, that was in, that was Skull Island, all those. Yeah, I'm that Skull was a while Fuck ago. Island. I haven't done those in forever. Feels like a decade at this point. Yeah, to start doing them again soon if this wrestling keeps going the way it's going. You know, we'll start with onward. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> when I see a Confederate flag, that's a green light to put a shell in a cracker back die honky die. Oh my God, AJ Adams. AJ Adams, thank <laughs> you for the three dollars, man. <laughs> die honky. <laughs> die honky die. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's why I don't wear the Dukes of Hazard shirt anymore because I'm afraid someone's gonna like flip out on me. I'm like, I just like the show. I don't know. I bought this at Hot Topic in 2006. All of a sudden, now it's a racist thing, so I don't wear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Traitor flag bitches. Hey, Joe. The middle ground position isn't always correct. Potentially. We cannot fool ourselves. The southerners who show off the Confederate flag know 100 <laughs> what they are doing. They know the history behind it. How does one have pride in a flag that represented slavery? Uh, traitor flag bitches. Thank you for the $4. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I'll be honest, man. I kind of side with you. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I don't, I, I don't see, I guess the problem for me is I don't like, I just, I see that to me, like uh, as a guy from Boston who doesn't understand, I, I gotta be honest with you. I see that flag as the Dukes of Hazard car flag. Like, so like, unfortunately I don't quite understand like it the same way that everybody else does. I just see it as, like, when I was a little kid, I loved that show. I loved wrestling. I loved Star Trek. I love all kinds of things. But, you know, that was a show that I really loved. So I had the General Lee stuff. So to me, that's all it means to me. But, yeah, finding out what it could mean is, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. It's weird, man. I don't know. I don't know why you sell. I don't know why you don't just have the American flag. We're all in America. Why don't we just have the American flag? 
But uh, yeah, I don't get it. But everybody has flags for all these different things. Hey, I got pride in this and that. And I'm like, what? Fucking weird. I don't like any of that shit. When I'm in America, how about you put a fucking American flag on your car, you piece of shit? Like, I, I think everybody sucks that does that. I think if you're waving the Ameri- the Confederate flag, you're weird. You have some kind of ulterior motive. If you're waving the Puerto Rican flag around, I feel like you get some kind of ulterior motive. If you're wearing the Irish flag around too much, it's kind of like weird. You get an ulterior motive. Usually to drink. Usually what it is for Irish people. Um, you know, you got the Italian flag on everything. It's like, dude, what are you going to go back to the country or something? Like, I don't know. You were born that way by accident or whatever. Who cares? You know, we're in America. Just put the American. Why don't you put the American flag in your window? You know, so like, how about like, I mean, oh, ha, ha, raw. You know, so I think it's all a bunch of dumb shit. You know, waving flags around, whatever the fuck. It's weird. No matter what it is. You came here from another country. Now you're waving your other country's flag around. Why? What, what, why go back there. Why are you here? If you're waving the Confederate flag, why? Why? You lost. You lost the fucking war. And you're in America. Why are you waving that around? It's weird. So yeah, it's all weird. It's fucking weird. No matter who it is, it's weird. Some kind of ulterior motive. What are you trying to say? That the fucking Irish are better than the fucking Americans? That the uh, Puerto Ricans are better than, well, part of America, but you know what I mean? Like, are better than here? Well, go back, go over there. You come here from, uh, you know, fucking China and you get a Chinese You're flag? Yeah, were well, you homesick? Go home, you assholes. You fucking got a Confederate flag, you're in America, go fucking get the fuck out of here. You know, put your American flag up. Shove the fucking Confederate one up your ass. <laughs> you don't see me running around with a New England flag, do you? Where's my New England flag? You don't see me running around like, oh, a New England flag. See, I think that's the most common mindset is what Texan said here. My family fought and died for that flag. It wasn't for slavery. It was for freedom and states' rights. You no, know. I'm sorry, but the slavery part came with the package. Maybe previous to to his direct family lineage, you know, more recent times, but what, what his grandparents it? might not have been involved in anything like that, and then parents, obviously. Wait a minute, who fought for the flag? It would be, you know, great, great, great. You're talking Civil War times, seventeen hundred. Yeah, they so. they fought they they fought for the they fought for like against slavery then. Yeah, I'm saying past that though. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I'm not talking about the civil war. That's like being like that's that. like that's like a German living in America, and he's displaying the Nazi flag, and he's like, "Yeah, I know that it's fucked up, but my grandparents fought." That's for, true for Nazi Germany. <laughs> well, yeah, they they were working hard. That's not. They were the ones at the camps that pushed the buttons. That yeah, never mind. Yeah, you know, like, just, think, think, I mean seriously, that's what you're saying. That's the comparison you're saying that that oh, you know, my grandparents fought. Well, yeah, some people's grandparents were Nazis. Like, I mean, like, like it doesn't like that's not good. It doesn't matter, you know. But I get it. That's a good like, point. It's I mean, like it's the same thing. Would you fucking like if a like oh I don't know like if a country like invaded a small town and killed everybody. Um, you know, would you then, a couple generations later, wave the flag of them and then say because well, they made I'm, really good chocolate? Yeah, my, no. well, my cousins, were, <laughs> my great Swiss grandpa. Miss for all. Switzerland starts to do. Attack it doesn't the mean world. we have to. It doesn't have to mean that we have to shit on your grandparents because they fought for what they believed in at the time. It doesn't mean we have to shit on their whatever. But uh, you know, it's probably not a. Uh, you know, no one's really, no one's really gonna like that. <laughs> no one's. I'm sorry. We've all, all of our parents and grandparents have done fucked up things in the past, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry. It's I don't know. That's if that's the case, then we have to let all the Nazi. Uh, war, I like what you originally said, though. That's, yeah, is that no? That's part of it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it makes sense. I mean, what are you going to do? It's just what it is. I'm just saying I can understand where Texans coming from. Like, if it was parents and even just parents to grandparents, it probably meant something different to them, but. It obviously still does represent whatever that negative aspect is. Well, now Texas says uh, the North had as many slaves as the South, even after the war. Yeah, but yeah. Te- but Texas, I'm not walking around with a Northern flag, waving a North flag, or something. Do you know what I mean? I'm not waving around a flag or uh, like other than the American one. You know, so if you're saying that the American one's racist, 
then we have to get rid of the American flag, too. So you want to get rid of the American flag. Because you, you're, you're the ones that are running around with a flag that at the time supported the slavery stuff. You know what I mean? You're such a flagophile. You know, so you're a flagophile. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm not running around with a fucking flag about, you know, so, so that's the difference. You know what I mean? You should probably, like, you would think that when, you know, you lose that bad or you or when you lose at that point like that, you know, that you go, oh, you know, yeah, okay, let's kind of get rid of that now. Let's just be Americans. Okay. But, no, they still hang on to, like, the southern flag, the south, the right, like, the fuck? You were also mad at the gays for taking rainbows from you because you used to like rainbows. You said so. Yeah, every I mean, every flag does have something bad attached to it. If you think about it, too, Abel Salas Jr. is a good point. Yeah, every, every flag. Has to. That's why flags yeah. are dumb. Like it's all dumb. Like you ever do anything? You ever? It's kind of like well, if you ever do anything wrong, it's like you ruin the whole thing. You know, like if that's the case, then we all have to kill ourselves. You know what I mean? Because in Africans own slaves. So all African African Americans and all Africans, well, we gotta go. You gotta go, because you guys all owned slaves at one point and sold the slaves, and you owned slaves and you sold them to the white people. And uh, I'm an Irish American, so at one point my ancestors were slaves. So you know, and, and you add it up, everybody's done something fucked up at some point in history. There were everybody's been a everybody's race has been a slave. Everybody's been a whatever. So yeah, you can really it's really weird. You add it all up. The UK flag is like three flags in one. Uh, this dude's making Texas look bad. Um, yeah, Tex. Uh, yeah, I don't. I just don't agree with it, man. I don't agree with you. I don't. I I know you got all this pride in the flag, and you see it differently. I think you just see it, you know, the way you see it. But I I think that a lot of other people are terrified of you, <laughs> and they and they see it a, a different way. Um, that pretty much sums up most of uh, people's viewpoints in life. Right. So, that's what. It, that's what I was saying earlier, man. Is the you know you got a bunch of Democrats up. afraid of Republicans and vice versa. So yeah, if you, dude, I'm telling you, you see like, it one way. People are either afraid of it or against it. Uh, 1861 guys, just over 160 years ago. You all need a history lesson. Love you guys, but you're both misinformed. I'm verified. Yeah, Trailbound would know. That's why I said I, I suck it. You know, when the Civil War would, would take place. He's right, though, because 1700s, he, obviously, late 1700s would why be is he, Why is he giving us the date, though? Why is he giving us the date? I, I brought it up saying how long ago it was for oh. lineage. Well, that's so. Jake's fault. Don't blame me, you cunt. Oh, well, I'm sure you got as much historical inaccuracies as I have. Probably. I wouldn't have known anyway. <laughs> but I, I thought it was 1820, so <laughs> there you go. Um... Uh, I guess this. I'm looking at the years. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Who cares? It's a fucking flag. I don't know. Everybody's losing their minds. Um, AJ Styles did make a Dairy Queen commercial, which was really. A bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> black Mountain, North Carolina, is named after all the black slaves that were piled into a mountain in Tommy's defunct wrestling organization called the NWWL Naked Women's Wrestling League. Ever hear of it? Oh, yeah. They apparently had three PPVs, and Jimmy Hart was the GM, and yeah. Carmen Electra was involved in it also. Yeah. You can see on Red Tube. Brett the Shitman Fart. What up, Brett the Shitman Fart? With the $3.58 donation, that is the weirdest amount of donation ever. Um, but yeah, Brett the Shipman Fart, still one of the greatest names ever to donate to this show. Yeah, dude, I forgot all about that, and so I'm going to, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to watch that. I remember him running around with the megaphone and also being the referee at the same time. I think that that's what I'm thinking of. I got to check that out, man. Tommy loves hangings. Yeah, it's a really weird thing with him. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh. oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Hunt angle. Tell us your experience meeting that cocksucker Ryback and impersonate him. I mean, I think I already did it. I've actually told this story a million times. I think people are probably sick of it. But you can go look up Ryback, Joe Cronin, and find all kinds of videos on it. And plus my rants on it, too. Like there's a whole there's a whole rant I did recently describing the whole thing actually so you should just go watch that. Um, there's a video about him stealing from me. Um, there's just so much shit on Super it. Super jet. Super jet. Tommy eats homeless men. Fly that JCS flag high. 
Crazy Horse, what's up, man? Yeah, he's going to bang a, a homeless man. Yeah, I mean, we got Rybotch's prank call to the show that started that. I mean, city in this. Pretty, yo, this whole city was gritty. Yo, we might eat our own shitty. Yeah. Baron Corbin should hide in one of the storage closets on the top floor all day long and when the match starts, the locksmith <laughs> comes around to lock all the doors that they don't want anyone to have access to and locks Corbin in. That would be his character. Yeah, that would be uh that could be pretty funny. And he's just and he's like but he gets stuck in the closet. He'd be in the closet like um the guy from uh Seinfeld, Kramer, how he's stuck in the closet in the Airheads movie. Harry Steve, thanks for the eight dollars. The Ocho <laughs> coming in. Yeah, I mean Ryback basically we offered him money to be on the show and then he wanted two thousand dollars. Then he made a video ranting on me saying I lied that he wanted two thousand dollars. And uh then but then we found out just recently that Pat Buck, his booker, uh, was trying to steal money from everybody and probably told us that, even though Ryback didn't know about that, so he could steal the money and then yeah, book he would Ryback. get paid, not Ryback. Yeah, so then Ryback admitted to that, but then never said sorry or oh, oh yeah, that Joe Cronin guy wasn't lying. What else so, we got? Yeah. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Fuck Ryback. He's a lying piece stuff. of shit. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. I hate whites like hillbilly autism retard Tommy that fucks his mother and pimps his sister for change for bullets to take his life in the bathroom. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, dude. Jake goes, I hate whites They're like that hillbilly with autism retard Tommy that fucks his mother and <laughs> pimps his sister for change for bullets to take his life in the bathroom. That is... All Jesus. sorts of fucked up. That is dark. That Damn. was insane. We got to get out of here, man. Uh, we've gone way past where we're gonna do. Yeah, um, absolutely. I uh, I'm, I would give it a net of five, honestly. What? I, I four point five actually. When, uh, oh my that god, that sounds good to me. No, because I liked uh, I liked the main event. You know, they made Drew look good, and obviously Seth has to get some of his heat back. So you know, he, he gets a, gets away from the claymore at the end. And what did they, I give they... last week? They might know. Didn't he sneak in on him and, and stomp him and or no, was that no the week he smashed his head on the table last oh, week. Oh, that's right. That was I gave that week, that so. was to me that, that was entertaining. That was the best thing I've seen in a while. So I, I give la next last week a better rating than this. Whatever I gave last week, give this a half less. Cause like, dude, last that I know the whole sh the show wasn't very good, but that ending was so funny. Tonight yeah, that, nothing did that for me at all. I didn't you know, we already saw um, Drew get yeah, the I liked better. Yeah, the main event. I, I liked uh, Alistair Black's promo. I liked the fact that, you know, AJ went ahead and was the one to win. I mean, I know that sounds asinine for how they booked it, but he adds a good bit of star power to the Money in the Bank match, and I'm curious. He's a bit of a wild card there. Yeah. Because I could see him win it as payback. Out of every option that was in that gauntlet match, I think AJ was the best option to win, to me personally. I was the only white guy. I don't think they need another new guy like Angel Garza or Austin Theory. Yeah. Bobby Lashley feels like he would have no chance to win it. Same with Shelton Benjamin, Akira Tozawa, and Titus O'Neil. So at least AJ brings a bit of uh, not just credibility but chance to it. You know, I could see him walk away with that briefcase. Yeah, I think that um, that was it. Ended up being a pretty good decision. At first, I was like, "What the fuck?" They just did all that with Lashley for nothing, and then it turned out they had a plan. So that kind of made that better you know at first i was tweeting like what the fuck but then we ended up getting the payoff i guess for that so yeah. okay and, and i like sheena basically saying originally you know opera non verba she, she's you know deeds not words and she's gonna back up her you know her stance with with her offense basically so she still seems like a, a tough ass and i'm hoping she wins the women's obviously but every time she speaks i just think like Lesbian truck driver. Give it a hell yeah. 
What's up Joe and Big Sexy Jake I didn't watch Raw because <coughs> I hate WWE. Oh. But Joe Jake would you guys be Pat Patterson's pool boys? Broken Lion, thanks for the 316. Um, yeah, you know, if YouTube keeps going the way it's going and wrestling keeps going the way it's going, I'll, I'll be Pat Patterson's pool boy if he can get me in. Now that he's you on know? Twitter. Yeah, get me in. Pat, you know what? I'm going to tweet him. I'm going to him, go, get it going. Everybody tweet Pat the sexiest pictures of me possible. And tell him you want to get an interview. He only yeah. get paid if he finishes it, and then you ask the hard questions. And tell him how great of an announcer I am, and then show him my pictures. And if I can turn him on enough, I know I can get to his pool, and I'll rub his dick a couple times, and then I think he'll get me in the door. And then they'll say, we've already had this guy here, Pat. We chose a taller vampire guy over him. Uh, and then Pat will say, but I promised him I'd blow his suck his cum. He'll tell everybody. And, like, I will. I'll tell on him if he doesn't fucking deliver me a job. Of at least one year in the WWE, I will tell on him. Um, I want to shout out to JD Venom f- for the $51. It was the largest donation of the stream. We are out of here tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night. I'll be back tomorrow night on my other channel for Throwdown. So make sure you check that out. Plus, Patreon, guys, is fire. We have all kinds of crazy news coming this week and new shows and shit coming. Um, And I want to thank all the people that signed back up again. We're up to 330 patrons again and climbing and new shows coming on there. 30 hours of content a month. Hail Metal Forever is back. Chad's back. Hey, yo, Chico, Boston Supreme, Carmats, and so many more are back. Plus the $25 tier patrons a month. They are coming back as well. We've got those announcements coming throughout the week of the people that returned as producer-level patrons. Thank you for that. we got to add D. Wells to the all-time list. And we got to add... Uh, we might have to add it's Bullsy, too. I'm not... I think that that's true. I may be wrong, but I think that we need to add them. Uh, to the list, and if that's the case, we'll get to work on that. Uh, everybody else, I hope everybody has a good night. Hit me up on Twitter. My new Twitter account since I'm banned on my other Twitter, Corrupted is banned. So you're going to hit me up now at JCS Commentary. If you got something to say to me, feel free to hit me up. Let me know. Joe Cronin Show at Yahoo.com. Instagram, follow me on Instagram.com. Joe Cronin Show. Everybody in the chat, happy birthday, Denise. 40 is the new 14. Hope nobody catches AIDS over the next couple days, de- or coronavirus over the next couple of days. Uh, same thing. And, Close uh, enough. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. I'll be uh, doing a lot of things tomorrow. Good Alrighty. Night. Good night, Jake. Everybody have a great night. Stay sexy, stay healthy. Stay wet. Mm. Keep it hard. This, 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 this is the most mature audiences only shit you've ever heard. Period. All right, now that he's gone, everybody, how lame is Jake? Like, I mean, can we talk about how lame this fucking guy is? Like, I mean, no, I'm just kidding. All right, good night, everybody. Good night, Jake. Send the soy boys home. At Countdown Ended on Twitter for Jake. Gonna sugarcoat At JCS shit. Commentary for me. Goodbye. This, this is, this is the Joe Cronin Show. Now, now, here's Joe here's Cronin. Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin. Mm.